There get to be more of you every year. You know, when I was your age, when our grandfather walked in the room, we'd all say, Hi, Grandpa! Hi, Grandpa! Hi, kids! <laughs> you took a hint, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at me. I'm all dressed up. <laughs> And I came all the way down here to see you. <laughs> and you. <laughs> now let me tell you something. I don't like getting all dressed up. And I don't like coming all the way down here. But for this book, mm -hmm. for you to hear this story, for me to tell it, I will. William Goldman wrote this book. He read it to his son. My father read it to me. Now I'm going to read it to you. And what you do with it will be of more than passing interest to us all. Sweetie, did you give me a water bottle over here? I think so, Grandpa. Okay, good. I trust you. <laughs> Is everybody ready? Yeah. Does anyone need to go to the bathroom? I do. I, no. Kind of. Well, you just have to hold it. Okay. <laughs> I can, I suppose you will too. <laughs> Chapter one. The bride. The year Buttercup was born, the most beautiful woman in the world lived in Bengal. Her name was Aluthra, and her skin was a dusky perfection unseen in India for over 80 years. Aluthra was 19 the year the pox plague hit Bengal. Wait, what? <laughs> the girl survived even if her skin did not. <laughs> when Buttercup was 15, Adela Terrell of Sussex on Thames was easily the world's most beautiful. <laughs> But one day a suitor proclaimed her the most ideal woman ever spawned. Checking her mirror, she knew at once the young man was correct. She was, through no real fault of her own, completely perfect. <coughs> Not only am I perfect, but I am quite possibly the first perfect person in the whole long history of the universe. <laughs> How lucky I am to be perfect, and sensitive, and rich, and sought after, and young. Yeah. Well, I'll always be sensitive, and I'll always be rich. But I can't stay young, and if I can't stay young, how am I to stay perfect? For the first time in her life, Adela furrowed her brow. She checked all morning, and though she was able to convince herself she was still as perfect as ever, she was definitely not as happy as she had been. The first worry lines appeared within a fortnight. The first wrinkles within a month. And by the end of the year, creases abounded. She married soon thereafter the self-same man who accused her of sublimity. And gave him merry hell for many a year. Oh! Yes, dear! <laughs> Buttercup, of course, at 15, knew none of this. And if she had, she would have found it completely unfathomable. <laughs> oh, of course. Why would anyone care if they were the most beautiful woman in the world or not? What difference would it make if you were only third most beautiful, or sixth? 
At this time, Buttercup was nowhere near the most beautiful, uh, being barely in the top 20s. <laughs> and that primarily based on potential. <laughs> she certainly didn't take any particular care. <laughs> She was almost 17. The kingdom's only count came to the village and watched Buttercup as she made her way through town. She paid him no mind. There seemed nothing remarkable about him, but his presence marked a turning point in her life. <laughs> Now mother will want me to wash before dinner. I hate to wash my face. I loathe that area behind your ears, and I'm sick of combing my hair. What I really want to do is ride you and taunt the farm boy. <laughs> He was more a young man now, actually. <laughs> Orphaned as a boy, he worked for Buttercup's father, uh, doing chores during the day and reading books by candlelight late into the night. Farm boy, hand me down. <clears throat> Go stable horse, farm boy. <clears throat> Quickly now, trot lazy thing or I'll tell father. As you wish. That's all he ever answered. Brush him well, farm boy. As you wish. And check his shoes, farm boy. As you wish. <laughs> At night, more often than not, he would chase away the village boys who'd come to try to gain Buttercup's attention. Hey, Buttercup. Hey, Buttercup. <laughs> Emerging silently from his hovel, crashing a few and sending them flying. She never failed to thank him for so doing. Thank you. As you wish. As it was, Wesley had his share of attention from the local village girls. Hey, Wesley. <laughs> girls chase that farm boy around like that. Sure, he has eyes like the sea after a storm, but who cares about eyes? Sure, he's muscular, but anybody would be muscular who slaved all day. It must be his teeth. He does have nice teeth. <laughs> Got to give credit where credit is due. Could it be anything else? I, what would happen between them anyway? Uh, he'd smile, and, and then they'd fall in love, and, and get married, and live happily ever after, and oh dear. A <laughs> creeping realization kept Buttercup awake all night. With determination, she was outside his hovel before dawn. She knocked, and he appeared in the doorway. I love you. I know this may come as something of a surprise since all I've ever done is taunt you, but I have loved you for several hours now. <laughs> and every second more. An hour ago, I thought I loved you more than any woman could love a man, but half an hour after that, I realized that what I felt before was nothing compared to that. Ten minutes later, I realized that what I felt previously was as a puddle compared to the high seas after a storm. Just like your eyes. There is no room in my body for anything but love of you. My arms love you. My ears adore you. M my knees shake with blind affection. Oh, Wesley. Why have I never said your name before? <laughs> Wesley. Wesley. Darling Wesley. Sweet, perfect Wesley. Whisper that I have a chance to win your love. What could Wesley say when confronted with such pure, unflinching, unwavering, completely self-giving love? He shut the door in her face. Without a word. Without a word. Bitterly, Buttercup fled back to her room, safe behind the locked door, and covered the world in tears. It was dusk 
when she heard footsteps outside her door, then a knock. Whoever is that? It's me, Wesley. I've come to say goodbye. You're here to say goodnight? How thoughtful. I'm leaving. You're leaving? Uh, the farm? Mm. Now? Because of what I said this morning? Oh, yes. Well, remember this. I won't ever take you back. Just because you're beautiful and perfect, it's made you conceited. I'm going to America to seek my fortune. Oh, well, you've made your decision to leave. Would you stop for a moment? Don't you see what's going on? You never have been the brightest, I guess. Wait. <laughs> Do you love me, Wesley? Is that it? Do I love you? My God, if your love for me were... Or a grain of sand. Mine would be a universe of beaches. If your love for me Wait. were... Wait! I don't understand the first one yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My love is the size of a grain of sand. Help me, Wesley. I feel we're on the verge of something terribly important. <laughs> I've stayed all these years because of you. I've learned languages. I, I've studied long. Made my body strong. <laughs> I live my life with the single prayer that some sudden dawn you might glance in my direction. Does any of this getting through? Tell me that you love me. <laughs> Is that all you need to hear? <laughs> I've been saying that to you for so long, only you weren't listening. Every time you said, Fum, boy, do this, you thought I was responding as you wish. I love you is what it was. I hear you now, and I promise you this. I will never love another, only Wesley, until I die. But I fear I'll never see you again. Of course you will. What if something should happen to you? Hear this now. I will always come for you. How can you be sure? This is true love. You think this happens every day? <laughs> <laughs> After Wesley's departure, Buttercup set immediately out to work. <laughs> oh, Wesley, I must never disappoint you. Very quickly now, her potential began to be realized. From 20th, she jumped in two weeks to 15th. An unheard of change. The competition was tremendous, but three weeks after becoming ninth, a letter arrived from Wesley, and just reading it took her up to eight. <laughs> More than anything, it was her love for Wesley that did it, and her love for Wesley never stopped growing, which is why his death hit her the way it did. <laughs> At night, off the Carolina coast. <laughs> Wesley's ship was attacked by the Pirate Roberts. The dread Pirate Roberts. The one that never takes prisoners. Buttercup disappeared into her room for many days. There was never noise inside. No wailing or bitter sounds. And when, at long last, she emerged, her eyes were dry. In fact, she had never looked so well. She had entered her room an impossibly lovely girl. The woman who emerged was a trifle thinner, a great deal wiser, and an ocean sadder. This one understood the nature of pain. And beneath the glory of her features, there was character a sure knowledge of suffering. She was 18. She was the most beautiful woman in 100 years. And she didn't care. Oh, my sweet child. Are you all right? Yes. But I must never love again. And she never did. Chapter two, the groom. <laughs> Prince Humperdinck was shaped like a barrel. His chest 
was a mighty barrel chest. <laughs> His thighs were mighty barrel thighs. He excelled at statesmanship and war, but his true passion was hunting. The prince made it a practice to kill something every day. It didn't matter what. He had come to build for him the zoo of death and fill it five levels with the world's most deadly animals. Tyrone. I feel quick today. Have the albino fetch me a cheetah for today's hunt. There's news. Your father's had his annual physical. I have the report. And? Your father's dying. Crackers. <laughs> that means I should have to get married. Wait, what? <laughs> Just find me someone who looks nice. That's all. As you wish. <laughs> <laughs> but what if she's a commoner? The commoner, the better. And if she cannot hunt? I don't care if she can't spell. You know what I want? I want someone who is so beautiful that when you look at them you say, Wow, that humperdinck must be some kind of fella to have a wife like that. <laughs> search the country, search the world, just find her. She's already found. Chapter 3. The courtship. At dawn, they arrived at the village. They approached Monocup's house, lay in wait for her behind the barn. She delivers milk in the morning. And she is truly, without question, no possibility of error, beautiful. She was a bit of a mess when I saw her last, but her potential was undeniable. But a milkmaid? Well, we've come this far, we might as well see. I'll take her! <laughs> Leave us. I must court her now. <laughs> I am your prince, and you will marry me. I am your servant, and I refuse. I am your prince, and you cannot refuse. I am your loyal servant, and I just did. <laughs> Refusal means death. Kill me, then. I am your prince, and uh, I'm not that bad. Uh, how would you rather be dead than married to me? Because marriage involves love, and love is not a pastime at which I excel. I tried once, and it went very badly. And now I am sworn never to love another. Love? Who mentioned love? Not me, I can tell you. Look, you can either marry me and be the richest and most powerful woman in a thousand miles! Or you can die in terrible pain in the very near future. Make up your own mind. I will never love you. I wouldn't want it if I had it. <laughs> then by all means, let us marry. <laughs> Chapter 4. The Announcement. The Prince... Uh, this is kind of a boring chapter. Um, I'm going to give you just the good parts, if you don't mind. Now, uh, the prince can only marry a princess, and so Buttercup is uh, bestowed the title of Princess of Hammersmith. And, um, well, there's this whole section about princess school. It's rather dry. Um, <laughs> Well, what with one thing and another, <laughs> three years pass. <laughs> my people, my beloveds, from whom we draw our strength, today is a day of greeting. In three months, our country will celebrate its 500th anniversary. To celebrate that celebration, 
I shall on that sundown take for my wife the Princess Buttercup of Hammersmith. You do not know her yet, but you will meet her now. The 21-year-old princess far outstripped the 18-year-old mourner. In the past, she attended to her beauty herself. Now, she had five attendants for her hair alone. <laughs> that's enough, that's enough. Mustn't risk overexposure. You may <laughs> congratulate me now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, most of the people there would never forget that day when Humperdinck introduced Buttercup to the people of Florin. The vast majority adored her instantly. There were some that, to be sure, were frankly jealous. Only a few of them hated her. <laughs> In fact, only three of them were planning to murder her. <laughs> and yet, in the farthest corner of the Great Square, in the tallest building in the land, in the deepest shadow, the man in black stood waiting. <laughs> His boots were black leather. His tights were black. His shirt was black. His well, you get the idea. Oh, but blackest of all were his eyes, flashing, fierce, and deadly, and always watching. They watched Balakup as she left the Great Square, and they watched her as she rode off into the woods alone. Oh, horse, is it wrong to marry without like? Well, I gave the prince my word I'd marry, and marry him I shall. Oh, horse, you're right to be satisfied with what you have. Oh, A word, my lady. Speak. <laughs> We are but poor circus performers. It is good <laughs> we lost. We were told that there was a village nearby that might enjoy our skills. You were misinformed. There is no one, not for many miles. Ah, then there will be no one to hear you scream. That was all. <laughs> that was all Barakup remembered. Perhaps she did scream. But if she did, it was from terror, because there was certainly no pain. When she awoke, she knew she was aboard a ship with three of the strangest fellows she'd ever seen. I just don't think it's right killing a girl. Am I going mad? Or did the word think escape your lips? You were not hired for your brains, you hippopotamic land ass. Hey! Hey! Let us not tell her that we have to kill her. Let us just tell her she is being ransomed, huh? Ho-ho! Oh, the sun has spoken! What happens to her is truly none of your concern. I will kill her. And remember this. Never forget this. When I found you, you were so slobberly drunk you could barely afford to buy brandy. And you, brainless, friendless, helpless, hopeless. You want me to send you back to where you came from? Unemployed? In Greenland? <laughs> <laughs> That Vicini, he sure can fuss. He, he, he sure likes to yell at us. <laughs> Probably he means no harm. Yes, but he's really very short on charm. <laughs> <laughs> you have a great keep on rhyme, my friend. Oh, Enough of your idiot rhyming game. There's going to be a war, and we are being paid to start it. This is a serious matter. You haven't listened to a word I've said. I hope there are no rocks ahead. Because if there are, we'll be dead. <laughs> no more rhymes now. I mean it. Anybody want to peanut? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Look, we just don't want to kill a child. God does it all the time. It doesn't bother him. Does it bother you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a little effort for Hubbard to find a trail that we left for him. We should be at the cliffs at any moment. With any luck, we'll kill them before dawn. Or she will die. Her body should still be warm when the prince finds her. Oh, I only wish I could be there for his grief. It should be so... Homeric. Oh, where are you? Oh. Oh. Go in, go in! But I only dog paddle. Yeah, I didn't swim. Ah, you've got to be kidding me! Wait, I hear her, I hear her. Your left. Your left! <laughs> Concerned. I just wanted to reassure you. I mean, the show is called The Princess Bride, and we're just getting started, so Buttercup cannot die here. <laughs> she does not know that, and I'm trying to get her back into the boat. So if you're finished ruining my moment, you may go back to where you came from. She does not get eaten by the eels. <laughs> <laughs> you, you grab her! But it's a uh, well, no, okay. Get it. Ah! Stretch. <laughs> Your little midnight swim gains you nothing. My master plan takes into account any feeble attempts you make to escape. We're miles ahead of anyone. We're safe. Safe. Safe! What are you staring at? There is a boat following us with a single man on board. A man in black. What? There's no one following us? I mean, inconceivable! <laughs> there is a logical explanation. No one from Gilder could have possibly known what we've done, and no one from Florin could have gotten here so quickly. He is a local fisherman up for a midnight cruise through eel infested waters. <laughs> he is not. However, though we may seem following us, it is a coincidence, nothing more. He's gaming on us. <laughs> this is also inconceivable, completely and totally. When I stole this boat that we were in, I was assured it was the fastest in all the foreign channel. Oh, you're right. Uh, I'm so sorry. You see, he, he's not gaming on us, he's just getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> he's the angle of perception. My master plan is perfect. We are making good time, and we will be at the cliffs at any. Ha <laughs> ha! Look sharp! <laughs> you, grab you sink the ship. Wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and there they were, the cliffs of insanity. Rising straight and sheer from the water, stretching impossibly high into the night sky. They were the most direct route between Florin and Gilda, but no one ever used them. They were considered unassailable. Fast now. If the man in black is following us, which of course is not within the realm of human experience, but if he is, we have to reach the top and cut the rope. By climbing? You want us to climb? The cliffs of insanity! Oh, oh, I do all the climbing, pretty lady. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Climb aboard and don't let go. I would hate for you to fall. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> all aboard. <laughs> With that, the Turk began to climb. <laughs> then heavenly, <laughs> not in the history of man, arms to match physics. They were gargantuan, <laughs> totally obedient, and surprisingly quick. 
Faster! I thought it was going faster! I can't believe it! You're actually scaling the cliffs of insanity! That's kind of crazy! <laughs> and you're carrying three people! You're amazing! <laughs> the physics drawing me the <laughs> The man in black is at the base of the cleave. I can feel his weight on the bottom of the rope. He's fast. He'll never make it up. It's inconceivable. Oh, don't you keep using that word. I do not thin in men's what you thin it does. How <laughs> fast is he climbing? You. I thought you were supposed to be strong. I thought you were supposed to be this great mighty thing, and yet he gains. Hey, you know what? He's just got himself. I'm carrying three people. Excuses are the refuge of the coward. Uh, I'm just going to have to find myself another giant. <laughs> He is over halfway! Halfway to Dome is what he is! Climb, Turk! Did I mention your job is at stake? No. <gasps> fly! Let me fly! And basic fluke! His arms pulled, and his fingers gripped, and the rope held top top, and at last they reached the top! Ah! Turk! The rope! <laughs> He did it! He held onto the cliff face! Oh. His arms must be strong! He'll never reach the top! I'm sorry, how rude I'm being. I'm sure you'd like to watch! <laughs> he is still climbing! What? Inconceivable! No! It's no! I say that word! <laughs> it was inconceivable that anyone could follow us, but there was the man in black! It was inconceivable that anyone could sail as fast as us, but there was the man in black. Now this too is inconceivable. Yet, look, there is the man in black. What of your plan, Bessini? Spaniard. <laughs> I am the keenest mind that has ever been turned to unlawful pursuits. So when I tell you something, it is not guesswork, but fact. And the fact is that the man in black is not following us! He is simply an ordinary sailor who dabbles in mountain climbing. Who knows that black is slimming? <laughs> and was chosen the same general direction as us! However, he cannot see us with the princess, so you must kill him. Okay. Catch up with us and he's dead. Come on, princess. Catch up quickly, Inigo! I always do. Stay strong, my friend. Live long to the end! <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello down there? I just wanted to say that you are an extraordinary adventurer and it is too bad that you must die. Look, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm rather busy just now, so try not to distract me. Mm -hmm. I could help hold you up. Since you also helped me into this rock scaling exercise, I hope you won't be offended if I say I don't trust you. I promise to help you. I swear, on the soul of my father, Domingo Montoya, you will reach the top alive. I accept your help. <laughs> we will wait until you are rested. Huh? So, I do not mean to pry, but you do know, by any chance, happen to have six fingers on your right hand. What? You always begin pre doomed to the death conversations this way? My father was a slaughtered by a six fingered man. <laughs> Oh, he was a great sword maker, my father. And when the six thing haired man appeared <laughs> and requested the finest sword ever forged, my father saw it as the greatest challenge of any bladesmith. He slayed the cheer before he finished. This sword <laughs> is his masterpiece. <laughs> I've never seen its equal. <laughs> the six thing haired man returned and demanded it, but at one tenth its promised price. 
My father refused. And without a word, the six thing haired man slashed him through the heart. And I challenged his murderer to a duel. <laughs> but I failed. The six thing haired man left me alive with the six thing haired sword, but he gave me this and this. How old were you? I was only 11. But when I was strong enough, I dedicated my whole life to the study of fencing. So the next time we meet, I will not fail. I will go up to the six thing haired man, and I will look him in the eye, and I will say, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. <laughs> Prepare to die. <laughs> Nothing but study swordplay. Yeah. He's been more pursued than study lately. You see, I cannot find him. It's been 20 years now and I'm beginning to lose confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I just work for this scene to pay the bills because there is no a lot of money in revenge. Yeah. <laughs> well, I certainly hope you find him someday. Thank you. So, you are ready then? Whether I am or not, you've been more than fair. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to kill you. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to die. <laughs> Begin! Testing each other's measure, the duelists began slowly. But even so, their moves were so quick as to make the blade seem invisible. <laughs> An eagle could not have asked for a more suitable partner. The man in black was a master. His equipment defense was perfection, which blended into a graceful cap of Pharaoh. And how he applied the principles of Tybalt. And Nigo was thrilled. And the smile never left his face, even as the man in black began to win and push him towards the edge of the cliff. You are most excellent. Thank you. I work very hard to become so. You are much better than I. <laughs> then why are you smiling? Because I know something you do not know. And what is that? I am not a handy. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! Really, you are amazing. Thank you. Do you know, I really am enjoying myself, and it is not just because I'm weaning. Oh, don't think I couldn't tell. Mm. I understand you may not be able to notice because of the mask I'm wearing. But I'm smiling as well. Why? Because I know something you don't know. <gasps> I'm not an either. Wait, what? Oh! 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 No one of import? Another lover of the blade. I must know! Get used to disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Do it quickly. I would sooner destroy a Da Vinci. But I can't have you following me either. Oh. <laughs> I get the feeling some of you have heard this story before. <laughs> Should I keep going anyway? Yeah! Just checking. Just one <laughs> With one precise blow, the man in black knocked Inigo unconscious, and then followed a giant's footsteps to certain death. Oh, the man in black has beaten Inigo! What? Inconceivable! Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. But see, uh, the Inigo beat the man in black, and now they make switch clothes. Shut up! <laughs> Catch up with us! Well, wait, I don't fence! Your way. Kill him. Your way. My way? Yes. Right. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Wait! What's my way again? You're a giant. Yeah. You're strong! Well, I can only... Pick up a rock huh? and hide over there. <coughs> when the man in black comes by, crush his head like an eggshell! If you fail, there will be no more excuses. I will find another giant! <laughs> My way doesn't seem very sportful. <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't have to miss. I believe you. Now what? Uh, well, now uh, we face each other as God intended. Uh, no weapons and no tricks. Skill against skill alone. You mean I put down my sword and you put down your rock? And we try and kill each other as civilized people? Hey, I can kill you now. I, I'm trying to give you a chance. So you are. And I accept it. Frankly, I think the odds are slightly in your favor. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'll tell you what I tell everybody. I, I can't help being the biggest and strongest. It's not my fault. Well, I'm not blaming you. Oh, okay. Well, let's get to it then. Oh, you got me! Oh, right in the epic gladius! Oh. Are you just toying with me? Well, I want you to feel like you're doing well. I hate for people to die embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but I insist on a little effort on your part. Okay. Basic grabbed the man in black, lifted, squeezed, and squeezed. Then he took the remains of the man in black and snapped him one way, snapped him the other, and then threw the remains into the crevasse. And at least he meant to. Wait, what? Well, the man in black somehow managed to escape. <laughs> You're pretty quick. It's a good thing, too. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you wear a mask in a hood anyway? Oh, they're terribly comfortable. Oh, really? I think everybody will be wearing them in the future. Oh. <laughs> Isaac tried again, but the man in black dove around him oh. and got Fizzy oh. by the throat. <coughs> I just realized why you're giving me so much trouble. Why is that, do you think? <coughs> well, I'm not used to fighting just one guy. I usually fight groups, you know. Uh, for charity, that kind of thing. Watch it, that makes such a difference. <laughs> well, you use different moves when you're fighting groups of people than when you're fighting just one. Oh. I do not envy you the headache you will have when you awake. But in the meantime, rest well, and dream of large women. <laughs> cool down, and now the hardest one to go. The man in black raced towards certain death, and as he reached the end of a long, craggy bluff, he found Vizzini and Buttercup waiting for him. With a picnic. <laughs> oh, oh no! I, you want that long, craggy bluff right over there? <laughs> Welcome. You beat my Spaniard and my Turk. So it would seem. And so now it's down to you. It's down to me. If you wish her dead, by all means, please keep moving forward. I know what you're trying to do, and I want to make it quite clear that I resent your behavior. Let me explain. There's nothing to explain. You were trying to take what I rightfully stole. Perhaps an arrangement can be reached. There can be no arrangement. Oh, 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 oh! You were killing her. Well, if there could be no arrangement, we are at an impasse. I'm afraid so. I cannot compete with you physically, and you are no match for my brains. You're that snot. <laughs> Hold this. <laughs> <laughs> there are no words to contain all of my wisdom. I am so cunning, crafty, clever, so filled with deceit, guile, and chicanery. Such a nay, so shrewd, cagey, as well as calculating, as diabolical as I am Valpine. I, Bossini the Sicilian, am the slickest, sleekest, slyest, and wiliest fellow who has yet to come down the pike. In that case, I challenge you to a battle of wits. Battle of wits? The princess? Yes. To the death? Yes. Well, I accept. Good. Then pour the wine. Inhale this, but do not touch. Well, I smell nothing. 
What you do not smell is called Iocane powder. It is odorless, tasteless, dissolves instantly into liquid, and is among the more deadly poisons known to man. All this I already know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where is the poison? The battle of wits has begun. It ends when you decide and we both drink and we find out who is right and who is dead. But it's so simple. All I have to do is divide what I know from you. Are you the type of man that will put the poison to his own goblet for his enemies? Now a clever man will put the poison to his own goblet knowing that only a great fool will read for what was given. I, not being grateful, can clearly not choose the one in front of you. But you must have known I was not grateful. You would have counted on it. So I can clearly not choose the one in front of me. You've made your decision, then. Not remotely. <laughs> 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 because Iocane powder, as everyone knows, comes from Australia. And Australia is entirely peopled with criminals. And criminals are used to having people not trust them, as you are not trusting me. So I can clearly not choose the one in front of you. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get started! <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? Australia! Australia! And you must have known I would have known the power torch, and you were counting on that as well, so I can clearly not choose the one in front of me! You're just stalling now. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? You've beaten my giant, which means you have strength, so you could have put the poison to your own goblet, relying on your strength to save you, so I can clearly not choose the one in front of you! B but you've also beaten my Spaniard, which means you have studied, and in studying you would have found that man is mortal, so you would have wanted to put the poison as far away from you as humanly possible, so I can clearly not choose the one in front of me! You're trying to trick me into giving something away. It won't work. It has worked! You give it everything away! I know where the poison is. Then make your choice! I will, and I choose... Oh, what in the world could that be? Is that an R.O.U.S.? What? Where? <laughs> I don't see anything. I could have sworn I saw something, no matter. <laughs> What's so funny? I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> First off, let us drink. Me from my glass, and you from yours. guessed wrong. Ha! You only think I guessed wrong! That's what's so funny! I switched classes when your back was turned, you fool! You've fallen victim for one of the classic blunders! The most famous of which is never get involved in a land war in Asia. <laughs> but only slightly less well known is this! Never go in against a Sicilian when death is on the line! <laughs> <laughs> will come. Mind the ravine's edge. I prefer to keep you in one piece. Whatever you want for ransom, whatever you ask, you'll get it. I promise you. <laughs> and what's that worth, a promise from you? You're very funny, Highness. I was giving you a chance. There's no greater hunter than Prince Humperdinck. He can track a falcon on a cloudy day. He could find you. You think your dearest love will save you? I never said he was my dearest love, and yes, he will save me. That I know. You admit to me you do not love your fiancé. He knows I do not love him. We are honest with each other. Other couples cannot always say that. <laughs> or are not capable of love is what you mean. I have loved more deeply than a killer like yourself could ever dream! I know who you are. Your cruelty reveals everything. You are the dread pirate, Roberts. Admit it. With pride. What can I do for you? You can die slowly, cut into a thousand pieces. Oh, hardly complimentary, Your Highness. Why lose your venom on me? You've killed my love. It's possible. I kill a lot of people. Who was this love of yours? Another prince like this one? Ugly, rich, scabby? No. <laughs> no, farm boy. Poor, 
poor and perfect. On the high seas your ship is hacked, and the dread pirate Roberts never leaves prisoners. Well, I can't afford to make exceptions. Once word leaks out that a pirate's gone, be gone soft, people begin to disobey, and it's nothing but work, work, work all the time. <laughs> you mock my pain. Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. <laughs> I think I remember this farm boy of yours. This would be what? Three years ago? Yes. Does it bother you to hear? Nothing you can say will upset me. He died well, it should please you. No bribe attempts or blubbering. He simply said, please. Please, I need to live. Twas the please that caught my memory. I asked him what was so important for him. True love, he replied. And then he spoke of a girl of surpassing beauty and faithfulness. I could only assume he meant you. You should bless me for destroying him before he found out what you really are. And what am I? Faithfulness, you talked of, madam. Your enduring faithfulness. Now tell me truly, when you found out he was gone, did you get engaged to your prince that same hour? Or did you wait a whole week out of respect for the dead? You mocked me once. Never do it again. I died that day. And you can die too, for all I care. Oh! As you wish! <laughs> my dearest Wesley, what have I done to you now? I'm coming for you. <laughs> Made in Australia. I hate Connor. I bet my life that. <laughs> Just here. Disappeared, though. He must have seen us closing in, which would account for him panicking in error. Unless I am wrong. And I am never wrong. <laughs> they descended the ravine and are headed directly into certain death. Rally the men! We can still catch up and save my bride. <laughs> ah, oof! Oh, 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 what? Woozy from her tumble to the base of the ravine, oh, the one leading directly to certain death, Buttercup could barely believe her eyes. Can you walk at all? Walk? You're alive. If you want, I can fly. I told you I would always come for you. Why didn't you wait for me? Well, you were dead. <laughs> death did not stop, true love. All I can do is delay it for a while. I will never doubt again. There shall never be a need. Oh, when I left you, you were already more beautiful than I dared dream. Every night your face was forever behind my eyes. Enough about my beauty, Wesley. I have a mind. Talk about that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For all eternity, I shall do that very thing. But right now, we haven't the time. Come, my beloved, into the fire swamp. We shall be safe there. <laughs> the floor and field of fire swamp differs from regular fire swamps in two distinct ways. Like all fire swamps, there's a large percentage of sulfur and other gases which burst continually into flame. But also present are one, Snow sand and two, all oh, U.S.s. Though most people don't believe they exist. Oh. Wesley, no one can survive the fire swamp. Nonsense. You're only saying that because no one ever has. <laughs> it's actually not that bad. Well, I wouldn't build a summer home here, but some of the trees are actually quite lovely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There now, that was exciting. <laughs> this will all soon be a happy memory. Robert's ship Revenge is anchored on the far side. 
And I, as you know, am Roberts. But how is that possible? He's been marauding for twenty years, and you left me only three years ago? I myself am often surprised at life's little quirks. You see... <laughs> you see, what I said before about saying please was true. It intrigued Roberts, as did my description of your beauty. And your mind. <laughs> and eventually, Roberts and I became friends. And then it happened. Well, Roberts had grown so rich, he wanted to retire. He took me to his cabin, and he told me his dread secret. I am not the Dread Pirate Roberts, he said. My name is Ryan. I inherited this ship from the previous Dread Pirate Roberts, just as you will inherit it from me. And then he explained it was the name that was the important thing for inspiring the necessary fear. You see, no one would surrender to the Dread Pirate Wesley. So he sailed ashore, took on an entirely new crew, and he stayed aboard for a while as first mate, all the time calling me Roberts. Once the crew believed, he left and I have been Roberts ever since. Mm. Except that now that we're together, I shall retire and hand the name over to someone else. Is everything clear to you? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> Snow sand is usually, though incorrectly, identified with lightning sand. Nothing could be further from the truth. Lightning sand is moist and basically kills by drowning. Snow sand is dry as talcum and primarily kills by suffocation. <laughs> now, Buttercup did not allow herself to pet it. She remembered exactly what Wesley had told her earlier. Don't open your eyes. Don't open your mouth. Spread your arms. Spread your fingers. Spread your toes to slow your fall. That will give me the time I need to jump in after you. And then it will be like we're swimming against a gentle, fluffy, all-consuming whirlpool as we make our way to the surface. Easy. And then we'll have a wonderful story to tell the grandkids. Which is, of course, exactly what happened. <laughs> when I said I'd never doubt you again. <laughs> My darling, you'll be pleased to know we've discovered everything there is to survive the fire swamp. I mean, what are the dangers? One, the flame spurts. No problem, there's a popping sound proceeding each we could avoid that. Two, the snow sand. But you were clever enough to discover what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so in the future we can avoid that too. Wesley, what about the R.O.U.S.'s? Rodents of unusual size? <laughs> Frankly, I don't believe they exist. <laughs> Squeak! Squeak, I tell you! over there. We did it. There now. Was that so terrible? <coughs> surrender. <laughs> you mean you wish to surrender to me? Very well, I accept. <laughs> I'll give you full marks for bravery. Don't make yourself a fool. Ah, but how will you capture us? We know the secrets of the fire swamp and can live there quite happily for some time. So whenever you feel like dying, feel free to visit. I tell you once again, surrender. Will not happen. For the last time, surrender! Death for Wait! Will you promise not to hurt him? <clears throat> wait, wait, what? what? If we surrender and I return to you, do you promise not to hurt this man? May I live a thousand years and never hunt again? He is a sailor on the pirate ship Revenge. Promise to return him to his ship. I swear, it will be done. Once you're out of sight, take him to the zoo of death. I swear it will be done. <laughs> 
Yeah. I thought you were dead once, and it almost destroyed me. I could not bear it if you died again. Not when I could see you. Come, sir. We must get you to your ship. Come, sir. We are men of action. Lies do not become us. Well spoken, sir. This way, please. <laughs> what is it? You have six fingers on your right hand. Someone is looking for you. <laughs> well, this is getting exciting. <laughs> The festivities! Can we pee now, please? Please. Oh, you, you want to take a break? Yeah. We could take a little. Yeah. Um, what do you all think? Should we take a little break? Just a short one. Yes. All right. Please. We'll take five minutes. Will five minutes be okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a power nap and chug a Red Bull. <laughs> See you in five. <laughs> and she let it slip through her fingers like garbage. And that is what she is, the Queen of Garbage! But I gave the prince my word! Ask her how she got through the fire swamp. How did you get through the fire swamp? Hey? <laughs> Ask her if she did it alone. Hmm? She threw love away to be the Queen of Grime, the Queen of Muck. I am old, and life means nothing to me, so I'm the only one in all this crowd to dare to tell the truth. And the truth says, bow to the queen of feculence, if you wish, but not I. Cheer the queen of slime, and order, if you wish, but not I. Rage! 
well with the beauty of the queen of cesspools, but not I, not I, not I. Awoke from her nightmare, shake. <laughs> it had been weeks, but was still days before the wedding. The king lived, but her nightmares were growing steadily worse. Buttercup could take it no more and went to see the prince. It comes to this. In the fire swamp, I made the worst mistake in the world. I love Wesley. I always have. Seems I always will. Please believe what I'm about to tell you. When you said I must marry you or face death, I answered, kill me. I, I meant that. I, I mean this now, too. If you say that I must marry you, I will be dead by morning. I admit that when we first became engaged, there was to be no love involved. But surely you have noticed how my feelings towards you have changed. I would rather die myself than cause you unhappiness. Consider our wedding off. Oh, I will bless you all my days for your kindness. You returned Wesley to his ship? Yes, sir. Then we will simply alert him. Except for one thing. That being? Don't you consider the possibility that he may no longer wish to marry you? Until that moment, she had not. <laughs> you were, I hate to remind you, not altogether gentle with his emotions in the fire swamp. Forgive me for saying so, beloved, but you did leave him in the lurch. I think, sweetest child, that we should strike a bargain. You write four copies of a letter. I'll send my four fastest ships, one in each direction. The dread pirate Roberts is always close to floor and this time of year. We'll run up the white flag and deliver your message. If Wesley still wants you, bless you both. If not, please consider me as an alternative to suicide. Are we agreed? I think, uh... I'm not sure, but I definitely think this is the most generous decision I have yet heard. Agreed. Thank you for everything. Off with you now to write your letter. Your princess is uh, really a winning creature. <laughs> <laughs> Trifle simple, perhaps, but her appeal is... Undeniable. Yes, the people are quite taken with her. It's odd, but when I hired Vizzini to have her murdered on our engagement day, I thought that was clever. But it's going to be so much more moving when I get to strangle her on our wedding night. Once Gilder is blamed, the nation will be truly outraged. They'll demand we go to war. <laughs> Are you coming down to the zoo tonight? Wesley has his strength back, and I'm starting him on the machine tonight. Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got our country's anniversary to plan, my, my wedding to arrange, my, my wife to murder, and Gilda to frame for it. I'm, I'm swamped. As you wish. <laughs> Please, get some rest. After all, if you haven't your health, you haven't got anything. <laughs> All this time, Wesley was being held in a strange place 
with an even stranger man tending to his wounds. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the albino considered himself a dutiful caretaker in lifelong service to the prince. He tended to all the animals in the zoo of death. And so the prince entrusted Wesley to his care. What is this place? The Zoo of Death! <coughs> it's called the Zoo of Death. <laughs> Don't even think about trying to escape. The chains are far too thick. But I'm here until I die? Well, until they kill you, yeah. <laughs> then why bother curing me? Well, the prince and the count always insist on everyone being healthy before they're broken. So as to be torture. <laughs> I can cope with torture? Oh. Don't believe me? Well, you survived the fire swamp, so you must be very brave. But nobody withstands the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? It's taken me half a lifetime to invent it. I'm sure you've discovered my deep and abiding interest in pain. At present, I'm writing the definitive work on the subject. I wonder which is worse. The physical aspects of torture, or the psychological impact of knowing that your true love is marrying someone else in a futile effort to save your life. Pain is the most underrated emotion available to us. <clears throat> it always irritates me when people say as important as life and death, when the proper phrase should be as important as pain. You must know one thing. You're the strongest, the most brilliant and bravest man with the most perfect teeth. <laughs> the most altogether worthy creature it has ever been my privilege to meet. <coughs> and it makes me a little sad to know that I must destroy you. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> This being our first try, I'll use the lowest setting. <laughs> the concept of the suction pump is centuries old, and that's basically what this is. Only instead of water, I'm sucking away life. I've just sucked away one year of your life. Later, I'll set the dial to two, or three, perhaps even five. Now, I want you to tell me exactly how the machine made you feel. And I don't think I need to remind you that this is for posterity, so please, be honest. <laughs> Interesting. In humiliation and suffering, an anguish so great it was dizzy. Wesley cried like a baby. Much to the delight of the prince. Rise and attend. Sire! As Chief Enforcer of All Floor and I entrust you with this secret. 
killers from Gilda have infiltrated the thieves' quarter and plan to murder my bride on our wedding night. You suspect foul play? My spy network has heard no such news. Any word from Wesley? Too soon, my angel. Patience. He will come for me. Of course. She will not be murdered. On the eve of our wedding, I want the thieves' force emptied and every inhabitant arrested. Uh, many of the thieves will resist. My regular enforcers may be inadequate. Form a brute squad, then. I want the thieves' force emptied before I wed. It won't be easy, sire. Try ruling the world sometime. <laughs> the conquest of the thieves' quarter began immediately. But 36 hours before the wedding, there was still holdout. <laughs> Has the thieves' quarter been emptied? Ah, uh, there's still a fencer with the brandy, so we tried. We tried to get them out yesterday, but his mustache is really pointy. I heard he broke oh, a coat don't have it. Yeah. Time for this. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll distract him, and you get the brute squad to attack him from behind. Go, now! Oh. You there! Ho! Fencer! <laughs> Keep your... Ho there! I am not moving! No time to waste! Come along now! I am waiting for Vicini! Mini! Oh, I am not mean! I'm just a fool! Oh, cruel! Oh! I am not mean! I am not cruel! I I'm just... Fezzig? Who's Fezzig? You're Fezzig! <gasps> Fezzig! <laughs> uh, yes, Whoa. that's it! Grab him, just like that! Good! Fezzig, hi! Fezzig and Amigo will reunite it. As he sobered up, uh, as Fezzig sobered up in Ego, he told him of the Zini's death and of the existence of Count Rugen, the Six-Fingered Man. <laughs> Given Inigo's lifelong quest, he took the news surprisingly well. <laughs> Fezzik took the greatest care in reviving his dear friend. Oh, that is enough! That is enough! Where is this Rugen? So I may slay him. He's in the castle with the prince, and the gate is guarded by 30 men. How many could you handle? Uh, 10? Oh, that leaves 20 for me. At my best, I could never handle that many. This is no good. I need Vicini to plan. But Vicini's dead. No. I do not need Vicini. I need his master. I need the man in black. He bested me with steel, my greatness. He bested you with strength, sure greatness. He must have outplanned Vizzini. And a man who can do that can plan my castle onslaught any day. Let us go. Where? To find the man in black, obviously. But you don't know where he is. No, don't bother me with trifles. After 20 years, my father's soul will be at peace. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we better get going. Yeah, you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Dusk now. The day before the wedding, the prince awaited Captain Yellen's report, unaware the impatient Princess Buttercup also approached. <laughs> Rise and report. The thieves' quarter has been emptied, and the castle gate is guarded by 30 men. Make it a hundred men. My princess must be safe. Ah. Uh, my dulcet darling, today we wed. Tomorrow your men will escort us to Florin Channel, where every ship in my armada awaits to accompany us on our honeymoon. Every ship but your four fastest, you mean? Every ship but the four you sent? To deliver my letter to Wesley? Yes, how forgetful I am. <laughs> yes, naturally not those four. <laughs> well, uh, your majesty, <laughs> your other majesty. <laughs> you never sent the ships. Don't bother lying. 
It doesn't done. matter. My Wesley will come for me. Whatever was done was done for your own good. I don't think so. You are a silly girl. Yes, it's true. I have been a fool. Well, not having seen sooner that you are nothing but a coward with a heart full of fear. I would not say such things if I were you. Why not? You cannot hurt me. Wesley and I are joined by the bonds of love. And you cannot track that. Not with a thousand bloodhounds. And you cannot break it. Not with a thousand swords. And when I say you are nothing but a coward, it is only because you are the slimiest being ever to crawl the earth. I would not say such things if I were you. Now you will stay locked in your room till our blessed event. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <coughs> Though held against her will, Buttercup did not dismay. She kept Wesley in her mind and was confident her true love would come in time to save her. Meanwhile, Wesley lay in the zoo of death, with no indication he'd be rescuing anyone. Only 20 years of his life remained, due to Count Rubin's nightly life-sucking applications of the machine. <laughs> Um, Wesley's only escape was to think of his beloved Buttercup, but alas, the machine... Sorry, Grandpa. <clears throat> <laughs> but alas, the machine sucked those away, too. <laughs> Your Highness. You truly love each other. And so you might have been truly happy. Not one couple in a century has that chance, no matter what the storybooks say. So I think no man in a century will suffer as greatly as you. Not the 50. <laughs> Suffering. That was the sound my heart made when Count Rugen has slaughtered my father. The man in black makes it now. Really, that's him? Yeah, who else has cause for ultimate suffering? Probably right. Yeah, too. Come on! <gasps> Stupid wheelbarrow. How am I supposed to cart around the man in black when I don't even have a decent wheelbarrow? Jeff! <laughs> Albino! Where is the man in black? Wait, what? <laughs> Uh, I don't remember saying anything about a man in black or uh, carting him around in this wheelbarrow. <coughs> Fezzik, jog his memory. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jog him so hard. That is okay, Fezzik. We will find him ourselves. Through four twisted levels, Inigo and Fezzik descended into the zoo of death. Ah! Do that! <laughs> past the prince's vicious and starved animals, circumventing but constricting Arabian Gastini. Avoiding <laughs> 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 the venomous Gaboon Vipers. <laughs> Beyond the rabid King Bats. <laughs> Evading the wily, green speckled recluse. And on to the empty fifth level. Oh no! Don't say it!
Inigo Montoya, the son of Domingo Montoya, will not stand for this. I will have justice. Fezzik, bring the body. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, uh, did you happen to have any spare cash? Oh yeah, the Bruce guy pays pretty good. Uh, how's this? Let's just hope it's enough to buy a miracle. When the knocking started on his hovel door, Miracle Max and Valerie ignored it at first. Well, lately it had only been kids coming around to mock him. But now it was a little late for kids, and the knocking was a little more rat a tat tatty than usual. Go away, they're closed! You. Hey, are you the Miracle Max that worked all those years for the king? The king's stick and son fired me, didn't you hear? It's a painful subject. Hey, thanks for bringing that up, by the way. Mm -hmm. Hey, next time, why don't you give me a nice paper cut? Put some lemon juice in it. <laughs> uh, but we need a miracle. Hey, there, they're all. Call the Brute Squad. Hey, I'm on the Brute Squad. You're on the Brute Squad. You are the Brute Squad. This <laughs> is very important. We do not have time for shtick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired. Besides, you don't want some of the prince fired, would you? I might, I might kill whoever you want me to miracle. Oh, that's okay. He's already dead. All right, bring him in. <laughs> but I'm making no promises. <laughs> Mind the witch. She's very grouchy today. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen verse. <laughs> Sir, we are in a terrible rush, so if you could just... Don't rush me, sonny! You rush a miracle, man, you get rotten miracles, is that what you want? So, so you'll do it? How much money you got? Sixty-five is what you got. Sixty-five? <laughs> <laughs> I never worked for so little in my life! You gotta be joking. Oh, except for once, but that was for a very noble cause. Oh, oh sir, this is a very noble. His wife, she's, uh, she's crippled, and they've got, uh, broken arms, and <laughs> babies. Oh, so many babies, it's so sad that a star. Oh, Sonny! Are you a liar? Never mind, I'll ask him. He's a corpse, he can't talk. Oh, look who knows so much. So happens, there's three different kinds of dead. There's sort of dead, there's mostly dead, and there's all dead. This fella here, he's only sort of dead, which means he's still alive a little. A little air in his lungs here. Some pressure here. Hey! <laughs> you in there! What do you got that's so important? What's worth coming back for? Is this gonna work? Because, you know, I yelled at him before, and you just kind of like sat hey! there. Who's the miracle man here? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Sonny. Once you get a corpse caught up in conversation, your battle's half over. Excuse me. <laughs> True! You heard him? True love! That is a certainly noble! Sonny, don't you tell me what's noble? Oh, true love is the best thing in all the world. Except for cough drops. Well, everybody knows that. <coughs> so, you'll do it. <laughs> Absolutely! I would do it! If what your friend here had said was true love. But you misheard. Whereas I, being an expert on the bellows, will tell you that what your friend actually said was to blame. Wait, what? Origin, Scotland. Meaning to bluff. Obviously. So, so I'm guessing he's caught up in some shady business, and maybe a card game. That's not exactly a good reason for a miracle. Goodbye, boys, and take your blaving corpse with you. Liar! Ooh. Liar! A witch! I'm not a witch, I'm your wife! But after what I just heard, I don't think I want to be that anymore! He said true love, Max! Even I could hear it! True love! Don't go on! He's afraid. He's afraid that he's done. That the miracles are gone from his once majestic fingers. Valerie! We've been married 80 years! How can you do this to me? Because true love is expiring, and you don't have the decency to say why. Well, I do when I say this! For 
French Humperdy was right for firing you! Don't say that name in my hovel! You promised never to say that Patsy's name! What? Humperdy? Humperdy! Humperdy, Humperdy, Humperdy! Fiance's true love. If you bring him back to life, you will stop Humperdinck's marriage. What? Oh, listen to him. Wait a minute. This corpse here, he comes back to life, Humperdinck suffers? Humiliation galore. <laughs> now that's what I call a worthwhile reason. Here, give me the money. I'm on the case. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for how long you want your miracle? Oh, uh, that is going to be hard to say, because the first thing we got to do is storm the castle, and you never can be sure how those things are going to go. You want a fighting corpse? This you should have mentioned earlier. Oh, no good, Max. But, but, but we bought a miracle. <laughs> It's after midnight now. The wedding's at six tomorrow night. Look, I, I can probably get the tongue working. Um, absolutely the brain. Huh? With luck, maybe a little slow walk. You know, if, if you nudge him in the right direction. Then... What can I tell you? What you need here is a phantasmagoria. And you never would have gotten one of those for 65. <laughs> Max and Valerie worked tirelessly through the night. And in the morning, they presented Inigo and Fezzik with their miracle. <laughs> uh, that's it? That's it! Mm. Beautiful, isn't it? Mm. What do you expect a resurrection pill to look like? Not like a chocolate golf ball. <laughs> the chocolate coating makes it go down easier. Oh. And he shouldn't go swimming for at least one. In half an hour. Yeah, half, half an, an hour. hour, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for everything, eh? Yeah, yeah come on. Don't oh. forget your corpse. <clears throat> okay, right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, bye. 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 Bye, boys. Bye. Thank you. And have fun storming the castle. <laughs> Take a miracle. <laughs> Bye! Chapter 6 The Wedding. That morning, the castle gate was sealed, except for the main gate. It was the only way in or out, and its only key hung safely around Captain Yellen's neck. Fortified with 100 men, the main gates seemed impenetrable. Perhaps that's why nobody noticed, as the Nigo, Fezzik, and the mostly lifeless body of the man in black were on the forward battlements, assessing their position. It looks like there's more than 30 men now. <laughs> Who cares? We know this guy. Huh? Okay. Careful. So, well, yeah, okay. Swallow, swallow. so how long do we have to wait until it takes effect? Oh, I beat you both apart. I'll take you both together. I guess no very long. <laughs> Why won't my arms move? Well, you've been sort of dead all day. You see, <laughs> there's all dead, and there's mostly dead, and then there's sort of hey, dead. Hey, later, Fezzik, later. Oh, yeah. We got Miracle Max to bring you back to life. Who are you? Are we enemies? Why am I on this man? Where's Buttercup? Uh, let me explain. <coughs> See, oh, that's right. Let me sum up. I am Amigo. This is Fezzik. Buttercup is marrying Humperdinck in half an hour. So, we got to storm the castle, rescue La Princesa, stop the wedding, and make our escape. After, I kill Count Rugen. That doesn't leave much time for Dally. Uh, hey, look, your finger's wiggling. I've always been a quick healer. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are our liabilities? There's but one working castle gate guarded by 100 men. And our assets? Uh, your brains, Fezzik's strength, my steel. That's it? Uh, Impossible. Hey, you had moved. <laughs> My brains, your strength, and his steel against a hundred men, and you think a head movement is supposed to make me happy? <laughs> now, if we only had a wheelbarrow, that'd be something. Hey, <laughs> why don't we put that wheelbarrow the albino had? Uh, on the albino, I think. Uh, well, why don't you list that among our assets in the first place? Oh, what I wouldn't give for a holocaust cloak. Oh, 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 where did you get a Holocaust cloak? Uh, uh, from Valerie. It fits so nice, she said I could keep it. Oh. All right, all right. I need a sword eventually. She can't even lift one. True, but that's hardly common knowledge, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Brains, strength, steel. Wheelbarrow, holocaust, cloak, sword. There may be trouble once we get inside. I'll say, once we get inside, how do I find Count Rugen? Once I find Count Rugen, how do I find you again? Once I find you again, how do we make hey, our hey, escape? Hey, hey, take it easy. He's had a hard day. Oh, that's right. <laughs> My apologies. That? You do have an idea. Yes. But you're not going to like it. That doesn't sound good. I don't like it. <laughs> Wesley revealed the details of his plan, and Fezzik, though he still didn't exactly like it, put on the Holocaust cloak and stepped into the wheelbarrow. And then the heroic trio made their way slowly along the wall, approaching the main gate. <laughs> there was no denying the fact there was a certain excitement in the air. Now? Not now! Now? Not now! Now? Okay, now. Light them on fire. All right, Fezzik. Uh, can we discuss this fire thing again? You are doing great, mi amigo. The cloak will protect you from any fiery harm. Oh. You have nothing to fear. Okay. Now say your line. <clears throat> I am the great pirate Wabbit. Dread! Oh yeah, Dread Pirate Wabbit. <laughs> I am here, and my men are here. But soon, you will not be here. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, where is the key to the castle gate? I have no key to the castle gate. I swear on the springs of my ancestors. May my mother's soul forever sizzle in torment if I am lying. Fezzik, tear his arms off. Oh, you mean the castle gate key. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, let's go inside. The honor of the royal wedding fell to the Archdean priest. Unfortunately, he was well past his prime. He was totally deaf, approaching senility, and had a distinct speech impediment. In fact, at solemn occasions, unless you paid strict attention to his title and past accomplishments, it was very hard to take him seriously. Marriage! <laughs> Marriage is my princess together today. <laughs> Marriage! Get messy, I mean. Let dream make in a dream. <laughs> Men love, cool love, will follow you, follow <laughs> my Wesley now. Skip to the end. Are you doubling? Run away! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get crazy! No, <laughs> Wesley is dead. I killed him myself. Then why is there fear behind your eyes? <clears throat> Do you, Princess Bella, <clears throat> Princess Bella, <laughs> Princess Bella, <laughs> Man and wife! Just say man and wife! But, um, guys, we're done! <laughs> Deal with this. He didn't come. This way, I think. <gasps> Kill the giant and the dark one, leave the third for questioning.
You. You're that little Spanish brat I taught a lesson to all those years ago. Have you been chasing me all this time only to fail now? I think that's the worst thing I've ever heard. <coughs> Marvelous. <laughs> I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried. <laughs> Father. Hello. <laughs> My name. Is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Are you still trying to win? You have an overdeveloped sense of revenge. the prince's most lethal looking blade from its place on the wall. She took it down and held it to her chest. There's a shortage of perfect breasts in this world. It would be a pity to damage yours. Oh, oh my Wesley! Oh my darling! My sweet, my love, Wesley! Why won't you hold me? Gently. Gently? No. At a time like this, that's all you can say? Are you angry at me for getting married? You're not married. Not in my church or any other. I'm pretty confident it was a wedding. There was an old man, and he said, Mine and wife. Oh, no, it might have been something else. Did you say I do? No, we sort of skipped that part. Then you're not married. You didn't say it. You didn't do it. And even if it were true, widows happen. Every day. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, your highness? A technicality that will be quickly remedied. But first, to the death. No. To the pain. I don't think I quite understand. <laughs> then I'll explain. And I'll use small words so that you'll be sure to understand, you warthog face buffoon. That may be the first time in my life a man has dared insult me. It won't be the last. To the pain means if we duel and I win, life for you. But life on my terms. Meaning? Meaning the first thing you will lose will be your feet. First your left, then your right below the ankles. Next your hands at the wrist, followed by your nose. 
No smell of dawn for you. <laughs> Next, your tongue cut deeply away. Not even a stump left. Followed by your left eye. And, and then my right eye and then my ears. Shall we get on with this? Wrong! Your ears you keep. So that every shriek of every babe at seeing your hideousness would be yours to cherish. Every child that cries in fear at your approach. Every woman that cries out, dear God, what is that thing? <laughs> will reverberate in your perfect ears. That is what to the pain means. It means I leave you living in anguish, in humiliation, in freakish misery till you can stand it no more. <clears throat> So, there you have it, pig. There you are, you miserable, vomitous mass. <laughs> and I say this to you now. Live or die, it's up to you. Drop your sword. <laughs> Tie him up. Be quick about it. I wasn't afraid of you. It's just going to be so much more satisfying for me to hunt you down. I await with pleasure. Oh. Oh. Help him, my princess. Don't I know you from a kidnapping a few weeks ago? <laughs> oh, why does Wesley need me to help him? Uh, he's, he has no strength. He's been sort of dead all day. You were blaming? <laughs> That's hardly fair. <laughs> Who said life was fair? Life is just fairer than death, that's all. I'm sorry. That was not a clever thing to lay sleep. Did you at least win your battle? Jeez. <laughs> Charlie, dispatch him, poor John. Thank you, but no. Whatever happens to us, I want him to live a long life, alone with his cowardice. <laughs> Well, let us make our escape. Have you seen Fezzik? Here, let me help you, my darling. Amigo, help me! I, I'm lost and alone, and I, and I, I have to cover my shoe! Oh, Fezzik, <laughs> let us go outside. Huh? Come. Tyrone. Tyrone. Where are you? Fezzik! Fezzik! Oh, oh I, I'm sure, I'm sure. Fezzik! Fezzik! Jus, Jus, your palabras. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nico. I got so lost. I mean, I gave the man black to the guy with the book, and uh, and that was. Uh, and there's a long hallways, and everything looks the same, and I uh, I couldn't find the bathroom. And I, I'm sorry. Do you, you forgive me, don't you? Of course, Fezzik. Come, quick. Let us make our escape, huh? You know, it is strange. I've been in the revenge business so long. Now that it's over, I don't know what to do with my life. Have you ever considered piracy? You'd make a wonderful Dread Pirate Roberts. I do not swim. Oh, there's very little swimming in Paul. Mm. Ha! 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 Oh, wait, over here. Sorry. Ha! <laughs> I'm out of notions. Child's play. The Count is dead and the Prince is in great danger. Go now and you may yet save them. All of you, go. They obey me. I am their captain. And I am your queen! <laughs> Save Humperdinck! Oh, Save Humperdinck! Save Humperdinck! Ah! I know that was something about me, but I thought, I am your queen, sounded more authoritative. <laughs> All I can say is, I am very impressed. Well, I have been going to royalty school. Um, do you know there's a three-year intensive program? Why, with a master's in princess administration. I, I <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Fezzi, let's, uh, let's go on ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Yeah, uh, Fezzi, let's go ahead. But I just got one. Fezzi, I never get to see the kissing part. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it appears we're doomed, then. Doomed, madam. To be together forever, unless one of us dies. Well, I've already done that, and I haven't the slightest notion of ever doing that again. But don't we sort of have to, sometime? Not if we promise to outlive each other. But <laughs> I make that promise now. Oh, my Wesley, so do I. There have been five great kisses 
since Saul and Delilah Corn's inadvertent discovery swept across Western civilization in 1492 BC. Now, the precise rating of kisses is a highly controversial thing. What well, you have to judge torque and moisture. <laughs> oh, well, but there have been five through history that all agree deserve perfect marks, and this one left them all behind. Ever after the end.